Hi guys, and today we're discussing our second class on our um, supply chain management. So uh, last video, I went through the foundations introduction to the subject of supply chain management. And today let's get on to discuss the first fundamental block of supply chain management that is capability. So now let's talk about management capability. And in this video, we are going to be focusing on uh, flexibility and um, controllability and the capability curve. So by the end of the video, you should be able to understand and evaluate a capability curve and discuss your arguments in a, a concept related to capability curve. So let's start with the definition of capabilities. Really simple, it's a firm's ability to do something effectively. So capability have to be achieved in order to run a successful supply chain, which can include the capability of your manufacturing process, your welding process, your cutting process, and the capability of your coordination, of interfront coordination between maybe manufacturer, between your raw materials provider, your wholesaler, retailer, logistics company, your marketing company, all this kind of a process involved, all, all, all these companies involved, you have to have a capability to coordinate them and so capability is definitely important. Capability is also known as skills. So skills are definitely important, I think you agree. So Hayes and Pisano in 1996 gave a definition of capabilities as the activities a firm can do better than its competitors. This is a really correct or accurate definition of capability because even if you have capability, but you're not going to win over your competitors, your capabilities are not as well, uh, not as high standard as your competitors, it's not really um, creating any effects in your company and uh, in your supply chain management. So those are given by uh, Bo Wen King and Trollson Park um, professors in the Korea. Okay, so controllability versus flexibility. So those are the two main concepts I'm going to discuss in this video. So Nari Siemen posited four performance capabilities, which are new product development, flexibility, efficiency, and market-based performance. So controllability, let's talk about that, it's basically really simple, is effectiveness. In the last video, I discussed about um, what is effectiveness. It's basically about how to produce products in a short amount of time while saving the cost, while minimizing the cost, but produce in a, um, acceptable, satisfactory, or planned quality standard. So effectiveness is very important. And then we have something called responsiveness, which is a more of how does your product satisfy your customers? What is the level of satisfaction? How satisfied are your customers on your product? So that's more about responsiveness. So efficiency and responsiveness are the two most important concepts in supply chain management that as a boss or as a manager, you have to achieve in order to run successful kind of a supply chain and generate value for a company. So Kim Bo Wong, the professor of Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in South South Korea, develop a framework that further separates various firm capabilities into three categories, which are controllability, flexibility, and integrating capabilities. So controllability and flexibility are the important concepts that we'll talk about later on in the capability curve. And integrating capability is a capability to integrate and coordinate and balance between controllability and flexibility. Because you will learn later, two of them have a contradiction between. So that's an issue that most um, companies want to uh, solve. So now let's kind of um, understand what is controllability. I mentioned before it is effectiveness. It is basically the firm's ability to control its processes. So its primary objective is to achieve superb efficiency that minimizes cost and ma maximizes accuracy and productivity. So try to reduce cost and maximize its productivity, which means to produce in a short amount of time, but also ensuring quality, maybe the implement quality control, quality assurance to make sure quality meets the standard, but producing these products at a short amount of time. Often requires um, ability to meet the specifications. So I think you guys know about specification in your group six subjects of art design or um, ICT computer apps. So specification is the uh, goals you set on your product before you create them. For example, it can be the color, can be the features, can be the functions, can be the um, speed it displays this um, application, something like that. So basically, if the firm has ability to meet the specifications where they manufacture the product, then it means this product will be successful because it, it can be done, it can be manufactured in a really short amount of time. So that's more about controllability. 
Now let's talk about what is flexibility. Flexibility is basically the firm's eff um, responsiveness. How is capable? How capable is a firm to cope with uncertainties in the market, both internal and external? So. Well, our firms have to ensure its controllability, which means it has to produce at accuracy and at, uh, at a high productivity. Flexibility is definitely important as well, because if a firm is quickly producing its products very fast and, they pr and they're going to sell in the market and they find out their uh, customers change their taste and maybe their competitors are produce, produce similar products and they are winning the sales, so then the company have to make changes to the products and that, those, those are uncertainties. So, Two of them actually contradict because while you're trying to increase efficiency, you are decreasing your flexibility because you're producing these products faster and faster. Maybe in two days you're finishing 75% of the product. In a third day, if there is a change of consumer's taste, actually you you might you cannot have a turn back to go back and change your product and, and remanufacture the product. So we'll talk about that and discuss it a bit later on. Over time, so it's clear that interest in manufacturing flexibility has evolved from intra firm to an inter firm relationship. Why inter firm relationship is important? Because in a supply chain management, it's not really about your own company. You ha might have outsourced outsourced manufacturer, you might have a logistics company, you might have a marketing company, you might even have an outside human resources advisor, you might have a consulting company, you, have, you might acquire an investment bank. So basically, you have a lot of companies going on in this supply chain management process, so you're not going to, so intra firm is not good enough, you need to have inter firm relationship, and in 21st century, inter, inter firm relationship is gaining way more importance than inter firm relationship right now from this involvement. Okay. Now, Trade-off relationship. What is a trade-off relationship? It's basically some relationship that both of them do not coordinate well because basically it means when one variable increases the area and the other variable decreases, that's kind of a trade-off relationship or you can refer to a kind of an in indirectly proportional relationship in science. So what's, what's about trade-off relationship here? Is there any trade-off relationship between controllability and flexibility? Yes, there is a trade-off relationship. Skinner, 1969, first postulated a trade relationship between competitive priorities, for example, operations performances, and a case at 3M where the company was struggling with a conflicting relationship between efficiency and flexibility. So, why do companies struggle between efficiency and flexibility? This answer is really simple. It's about it's a bit common sense because when a company is increasing its productivity, it has less opportunity to turn back and remanufacture its products if there's a change in consumer in consumer's taste, changing customer's preferences, changing your target customer, changing the market condition, changing the economic condition, changing your market market structure, changes in your competitors, changes your market share acquirement pro process. So flexibility decreases when you increase the efficiency, which is I mentioned, uh, which is um, controllability. So there's a trade-off relationship between that, which is a really severe issue that happens to many companies, especially to small companies. When they have this trade-off relationship, they might just die out in a week. And for large companies, they also have this um, issue as well. So our key questions now, first of all, is there an inherent trade relationship between controllability and flexibility? And secondly, does a firm's integrating efforts can enable it to overcome such a trade relationship, making it possible to improve both controllability and flexibility simultaneously? This is a good question, and we'll talk about that later. So, I mentioned before, increasing the efficiency means a decrease in flexibility, but can we improve both together? Can we improve flexibility and improve efficiency as well at the same time? Is that possible from case studies learned from previous companies? Let's discuss it later. Okay, now let's see about the curve. This curve uh, is called the capability curve. Actually, online, if you search capability curve, this thing doesn't really come out. So the name capability curve is given by Dr. King, a professor in South Korea, because um, maybe some, some people call this thing something else, but you know, just call it capability curve, make it really simple. And it's really um, the name given by the Korean professor online. Okay, so as I mentioned before, when I increase the flex controllability, I decrease flexibility. 
where I increase the flexibility, where I try to allow my product have more chances of a turn back, I'm actually decreasing my controllability because I'm, I then have to produce my product very slowly. Maybe before I can do 70% in two days, now I have to do 70% in one week in order to observe market changes and consumer changes so I have more chance to turn back. But that decreases controllability and increasing the flexibility may mean a company may die out very fast because you're not meeting consumer demand. All the companies, your competitors who are increasing here, they are they are um, selling this mar uh, selling their products quickly to the retailers so consumers are buying these products when well, you're going to increase the flexibility you're producing very slowly then your products are not appealed in the market so they're actually getting lower sales and you may die out very soon so integrating capability which is the tax we are putting here is basically how we can minimize this trade of relationship between controllability and flexibility and we try to improve both of them at the same time and not to not lose to the disadvantages experienced by both the controllability and flexibility is this possible yes it is possible and the skill we need is called integrating capability now let's discuss about more about the inter integrating capability so integrating capability is the first ability to integrate, coordinate diverse functions and parts of a supply chain, so a value chain, embodied in overall operations effectiveness and new product innovation. So it is basically the ability to integrate this function, different parts of a value chain. So value chain we'll discuss, I think, later, um, discuss later on in the next video, which is about how we're creating values throughout supply chain management. It's really straightforward. It's basically about raw material procurement, manufacturing, your lead time, your delivery, selling to your retailer, these parts are called basically the integrating capability. Oh, sorry, it's a basic, um, these parts are called the value chain. So, integrating capability is to be embodied and shown in overall operations effectiveness and new product development of a company. So, this is because I mentioned that um, issues can arise both internally and externally to the firm. So the, Ability to integrate various activities basically to achieve the good coordination between supply chain partners in in this process. It can be a little bit difficult, it can be a betting game. It's about in when you try to integrate uh, controllability and uh, and your controllability and flexibility, you are actually making a bet. It's like an investment because you might take some strategies, you might implement some strategies in order to well achieve this integrating capability. But then you have the drawback. Your drawback can be diffi more difficult for you to have a high chance to sell a product successfully. That's possible because it's kind of a bad. Business is a bad. Right? Okay, so because integrating capability is driven by the firm's ability to integrate, let you, you read this by yourself. Involving a wide range of integration requirement, cross functional capabilities. Cross functional is basically how different combinations are worked out between different participants in the supply chain. So, is it possible to increase and to decrease and to diminish and eliminate this trade relationship and achieve something called a proportional relationship where we increase the flexibility and increase the controllability? Let's look here at the example of Hyundai, a Korean Korean automation car company. Let's see how 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 does he work. So in 1970s, the point is really low. Then, as you see from the capability curve, it's actually increasing. It's actually increasing, as you can see in the 2010, it's actually achieving the optimal point with a high flexibility and controllability. If we take these curves away and we leave only the point, you actually see it's going up. How does that happen? So that means the ability to integrate controllability and flexibility is achieved. It's possible. So, you know, it's possible. So if you are successful enough, if you are smart enough, it's possible to maintain this relationship and to achieve what is called a long-term dynamic capabilities in a proportional relationship. Now, here's a chain of capability. Now, capability happens to... Now, we'll, just now we finish about our um, little discussion on controllability and flexibility and it's possible to achieve and increase both x and y variables at the same time is actually good news but it's really difficult and a little bit more to share with you guys is uh, from interview i watched online of toyota so a toyota ceo um, interviewer asked the toyota ceo what is your hardest problem 
you ever experienced in your supply chain management? And the answer the CEO gave was to raise the flexibility while maintaining a high controllability. So you know, this problem does not only happen to exist in small business as well, all the businesses in the world experience this problem because there's a trade-off relationship. It's just an indirect proportional relationship when one increase, other decreases. So even Toyota, maybe even Hyundai, in many times, even Hyundai, even Apple, many companies experience this trade-off relationship. So if you are a student um, or potential student in supply chain management, a good thing to consider is how can I increase my flexibility while I maintain a good controllability? Which, which, which you have to really think of not while you study by yourself, you, you have to think of where you work for a company when you are maybe doing an internship, maybe you are actually working for a company before you obtain your MBA program because it's really hard to achieve this while you're just thinking in front of a computer but you actually have to work in the company to see maybe uh, to see other firms or the participants in the supply chain your manufacturer, your logistics company, your marketing company, your retailers, your wholesalers, the, um, your raw materials providers, and you try to coordinate between them to try to kind of uh, do what Hyundai has achieved in 2010. Now, let's talk about this more straightforward concept is the chain of capabilities. So, what's about chain of capability? Chain of capabilities are basically the skills required in different process or the supply chain management so first of all, let's look at basic capability. So basic capability is a capability the firms need to have when they are not even producing their products here. So this is a foundation. These are basically the foundations, foundational capabilities required by a business. So first of all, um, manager and employees have to have overall knowledge and experience because they have to know how are they going to carry out this process, what equipments do they need, what orders do we have to make, what are the prices of maybe the machineries, what are the prices of um, computer added manufacturing equipment or CAD or CAM, computer added design, computer added manufacturing, how, how, how much they cost, how much cash flow they need to have, although they are also quite hard but they are actually basic because they are conducted before a firm is actually starting to manufacture its products. Then includes the process. The designs of this process is lay um, is uh, relevant to the basic capability as well. Then how engineering is going to be carried out? Maybe the electricity setup. How to ensure you have electricity access? How the lights? It's so basically uh, really basic capabilities you see every factory has achieved actually really basic. And your work ethic. Maybe the equipment, your mask. Maybe your hat hat for uh, protection hat for the workers. Maybe protection suit. Basically, uh, it's also a more a little bit linked to human resources while we try to motivate these workers. So before you actually manufacture, you have to make sure the workers are going to work committedly. So maybe you can consider piece rate, like um, if workers produce more pieces of the clothes, they get more income. You can consider time rate when the workers work for longer time, they can gain more income. Also, um, each of them has their respective disadvantages, but that's what you have to consider with your HR, with your, if you're a manager, you talk, talk with your HR, talk with your IT team, talk with your development team to find out how you're going to coordinate and what are the optimal um, methods to adapt. Work ethics also include how long are you going to work? Is it 9 to 9? Is it 9 to 12? How long or is it flexible workers can choose based on how much salary they want to have or our workers all have a base salary with the work for 30 um, days a month or 28 days a month while work 10 hours a day they get a base salary of two thousand dollars something like that you have to decide all of them before you manufacture the product after those are finished your electricity is set up you have all your machineries you order your machineries you prepare your cash flow order your machineries you develop your work rules one two three four five you have your work ethics you have all, your, all the equipment re, re, uh, relevant to the workers then you go into the process level capability which is basically the skills you need to have in the manufacturing process so individual function is definitely really important individual skills of your processors uh, of your employees maybe welding skill maybe coloring skill maybe 
maybe programming skill as well. Um, process level doesn't only include your doesn't include only the division of labor, the basic workers who make the clothes. It also includes those high tire workers, maybe computer programmers. If your product is like application, maybe include designer, storyboard writers, maybe include uh yeah. So it's definitely a software engineers. So process level capability can be a variety of job positions depending on your product and your product's kind of a complexity. Individual process definitely really important. Basically, you have to design the process, as I mentioned before, in your basic capability so you can avoid mistakes while you're actually working on the process level. And then you have to have a process quality. You should adapt some kind of a quality assurance or quality control to ensure when you produce maybe a hundred pieces of this clothes, you check whether there's an issue inside. So, you, so you're not going to have issues in a thousand clothes if you don't check on time and you regret and maybe there's no turn back. So you have to adapt some kind of a quality control and quality assurance in this process. And then your individual function skills and capabilities can be like welding, can be cutting, yeah, so, so, so on and so forth. Then the system level capability is more focused on the responsiveness I discussed in video one. So that's about delivery process, overall quality and capability of new product development and design and lead time. Lead time is basically the time difference between a customer order the product and then the product delivered to the customer. So that, that's the time between these two processes. And then we see the performance of, uh, observed by the company, which uh, can be increased revenues, increased cash flow, increased profits, customer satisfaction, gaining market share, eliminating competitors, expansion of businesses, so sounds like that are the performances. Customers are able to observe the firm system level capability only. They are not going to, although this um, basic capability and process level capability is very important, but customers are not going to know whether your welding skill is good or not. They're not going to see your technologies. They're not going to see whether your uh, all the staff in your factory are well set up. They're only going to observe this especially quality and lead time. The two main parts that make up customers' feedback and satisfaction of your product is how, how, good your, how good is your product's quality, how good is your product design, how good is how good is lead time, how fast do they get a product, do they feel annoyed, or they feel, oh, your product comes to my house very quick. So that's about, so remember to work on your system level capability. So here's the chain of capability. So basic capabilities lies on the layer of this pyramid of trust and mutual goals. Goals between so you have to kind of uh, implement trust between you and your workers. Motivate your workers. Discard with your HR. HR should be really skillful and expertized at how to motivate the workers while trying to maintain their effectiveness in the low cost. So basically. Your, you should definitely employ HR who complete degrees in human resources or those who have a foundation on human resources philosophy because once you have some understanding of management philosophy in human resources uh, you are more able when you collaborate with your HR you are more able to increase the efficiency of the workers so philosophy course we offer by many universities who teach HR if you want a major in human resources you can consider taking some course taught by professors on management philosophy then in the process capability we require individual technical skills welding cutting programming software engineer hardware engineer something like that then group implement skill is system capability where we try to market your product you try to have a flexibility and responsiveness so now this part lies in the system process because you have to adapt to changes in market taste so if you can change if there's a changing consumers preference as what I mentioned before on responsiveness of a flexibility and you can still publish your products to the market very fast you're going to gain a lot of customer loyalty so definitely work on the flexibility is definitely important but then it might contradict with um, it may contradict with controllability so we have to find out how do I achieve this integrated capability to raise the optimal point to a high to a high point then we have system level improvement and performance to be seen through the satisfaction, through the revenue, through our income statement balance sheet, high performance internalization of the process. So I'll see you later. Now there are two types of improvement. One is inc incremental 
versus radical improvement. So incremental improvement is to gradually improve your product, maybe month by month, year by year, and relative and then radical improvement is more like you adapt some kind of strategies. That once you implement this strategy, you're able to increase the sales by a lot from original flat horizontal level. So one example of radical improvement, let's go to uh, Volkswagen. So Volkswagen in the 1990s adapted a kind of a, adapted a 10 year warranty process. So before their, their improvements like here, the level of quality, but then after they implemented this 10 years warranty, the sales improve a lot because customer now trust they have the ability to buy the car and they able to fix the car if there's any problem because they want the car to be able to drive for like at least five to ten years. So the ten year warranty program implemented by Volkswagen vehicle boosted a lot of improvement to sales. But does that mean radical improvement is better than incremental? No, both of them are needed. The best combination is to have incremental improvement, then you have a radical improvement afterwards when you combine all the skills you got, all the skills you assembled through your incremental improvement. So I cannot draw right here in the slide because it's a PDF. So what I think is, a in, uh, is optimal optimal graph to show this is basically I have in, um, gradual increment here, then I have kind of this, kind, I have then kind of a radical improvement achieved. That's what Volkswagen did. Volkswagen didn't really have this. Like they, they didn't really came from a straight, maybe it's a B flat, but not a straight flat line to a, a, to a high achievement after the 10 warranty program. Because the 10 warranty program is not just something that can be implemented or achieved by saying, oh, 10 year warranty program implement. It's not that easy. They have to have enough cost. They have to implement cost, implement investment into this warranty program because they have to, they have to fix cars around the world. Someone in Germany have the problem you have to fix, someone in China have the problem you have to fix, someone in South Korea have any problem with a car, they have to fix. So they have to develop their personnel, they have to develop with the human resources, they have to develop with the technology before they can actually implement the 10 year warranty program that they can see a huge improvement. So definitely, I, I cannot really say the versus uh, means some, uh, either one of them is better, the versus means both of them had to be assembled together and the optimal is when you apply both. So yeah, that's pretty much about um, this video on capability or management capability. So in this video overall, we have discussed about management capability on the capability of a firm ability to do something effectively. We discussed about controllability, which is efficiency to produce products and accuracy and high productivity while minimizing the cost. And then we discussed about flexibility, which the firms which is the ability of the firm's res responsiveness to uncertainties in the market. Then we discuss whether it is possible to achieve both. Yes, it is possible, it's, but it's like a bet. Maybe it's possible now, not possible in the future. But you don't really necessarily have to achieve this because sometimes you can get lucky and sometimes you don't have to be flexible, but sometimes you have to be. So, you know, big companies also face this curve. Some companies achieve, like Hyundai, they actually achieve kind of a proportional relationship. But even if you don't achieve this, it doesn't mean your company is unsuccessful, but really you have to think of how to coordinate them in order to stay longer in the market. Then we discuss, discuss about the skill required, which is integrating capability in order to reduce the trade-off relationship between controllability and flexibility. And lastly, we discussed about the chain of capability, which include basic process level and system capability and remember, customers are only going to observe the system level capability of the firm. Although system level capability is built on process level capability, but customers are not going to see how well you car your products, how well you wear your products, how well you motivate your workers, how well your workers dress up, how safety is your factory, how hygiene, how hygiene is your factory. They're not going to care this part. Then we discuss discuss about the pyramid. And lastly, we talk about incremental and radical improvement and optimal way to coordinate both of them to achieve kind of combination of incremental then radical improvement. Okay, so that's about the video today on management capability. On the next lecture, we are going to be focused on learning capability. So learning may refer just to the process of acquiring knowledge from maybe a book, from a professor, from ebooks, from any resources, but 
in supply chain learning is definitely important because managers have to constantly learn in order to construct a successful um, con construct a, a successful supply chain and in the fourth video we're going to be discussing about quality so we're going to discuss in depth what quality aspects have you uh, and do you have to be do you have to concentrate at and how to increase the quality of your product well uh, including different strategies you can use to increase products in business study where you only learn is quality assurance and quality control they are not really they might be helpful but it's not really that's only to ensure mistakes are not made to save costs but how do you improve your quality at the first place before we make these products and how can you ensure the quality of your product can achieve customer satisfaction we'll find out more of that in the fourth lecture so that's all about today hope you can grab some knowledge grab some information out of the video today thank you